Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, I'm on Skype right now with one of my favorite people in the world, Ellen Livingston, who is one of the pioneers at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, although we're not using that term pioneer anymore. And she's in Florida right now, about to head to Costa Rica, and we just had an amazing chat, and I want to introduce you to her. So I'm going to ask her some questions uh, about what she's doing and what she's got going on. So Ellen! Hey Tim! <laughs> How are you doing? Doing good. It's been fun. All right. Now, you just drove from Michigan to Florida to be where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And you 20 said, long hours. 20 hours. Now, you're a, a practitioner of yoga. So what is that experience like driving 20 hours? Did you break it up? Did you do it in one run? Oh, yeah. I stopped at least every hour and a half and mm-hmm. did all my yoga stretches okay. in the uh, <laughs> rest areas. <laughs> got a few looks, but I don't care. Uh, especially that psoas, you got to stretch when you've been mm-hmm. sitting and cramping it up. So, um, yeah, did a lot of stopping, a lot of stretching. Took it easy. I took it in three days. Okay, three so days. Wow. Friends along the way made it nicer. Now you're in Englewood, Florida. Englewood, Florida. It's a great little community. They have a. Um, it's kind of little known by everybody, which is why I like it. So they got a, a cool farmer's market and some uh, raw foodies moving in and some organic gardeners and yoga people. So yoga on the beach every morning. Very oh, nice. nice. So it's like a little raw community that's forming down there? A little bit, yeah. And definitely some, some vegan and just some um, awareness. So I like that. There's, it's being called the cool place to live now down here. So don't tell ah, too many. Okay, I, I, won't tell, I won't put that in the video. <laughs> And it's like south of Sarasota, is that what you said? Yeah, about half hour. So I'm going to go up to Sarasota for a few uh, yoga events. Got some kirtan chanting up there, and so it's totally reachable. Um, Venice and Sarasota have bigger stuff going on. Drum circles on the beach. Just fun community things to do. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, and it's warm here. It's about 80 degrees, 80-something today. Yeah, it's close to that here. Yeah. (laughs) So tell me about the retreat that you're leading in Costa Rica. Yeah, well, so part of my plan in coming to Englewood was to get myself nice and relaxed and tan and really ready <laughs> to receive the stressed out retreaters that are going to be coming from the north, right? So I like to be one step ahead of them so that I can be just the, the best host for them. So I will drive across to the other side of Florida and hop on a plane at the end of January. So January 30th to February 7th, we've got... Um, about 13 people coming right now. I can take just a few more. We've got a couple of rooms left and we'll have eight nights and seven full days of fun in the sun. Beautiful, beautiful tropical environment. We go to the best waterfall swimming holes in in all of Costa Rica. Um, and we go to the best beaches. We're situated in just the perfect paradise spot at the end of a road where you can see the sunrise and the sunset and all of the jungle around you. And it's very inspiring. So we, we, my intention by the end of the retreat is that people leave feeling cleansed, feeling healthier, feeling um, fitter, because we do a lot of mountain trekking. Oh, nice. um, you don't have to have done that before. We <clears throat> we take care of everybody. You do what you can. And um, all of the excursions are, of course, optional. Some people sometimes stay at the farm, and now they've got a beautiful chemical-free swimming pool. Oh, nice. In. So you can do that. We have yoga every day. We have an all-raw menu, of course. And um, we have meditations, we have some singing bowl stuff, we do salsa dancing one night. We have a lot of fun, and we create a lot of sense of um, supportive community there. So we have life coaching sessions throughout the week as a group, really get to know each other's process and share our journeys with each other so that it's really an, um, an intimate kind of a space. It's very, people feel safe, um, we feel comfortable sharing our um, health challenges and our inner challenges with each other, um, which is, I think, um, really probably the coolest part of the retreat for me is watching people do that and really um, blossom by the end of the week with intentions going forward, feeling inspired and cared for, supported, and with new um, confidence and some new knowledge about what it is that they need to do to step up their uh, life to be a little more inspired and authentic the way they would love it to be. So that's really what it's all about. And I love it because it's a chance to bring people out of their normal environment yeah. and into this <clears throat> kind of special, you know, love tank, growth tank kind of environment for a whole week. Um, so if anybody out there would like to be part of this experience, contact me because there is still some space. and I would love to talk to you. 
So it's like a full immersion. It's not just a raw food retreat. It's not just a yoga retreat. It's not just a life coaching retreat. It's everything that you're doing. Yeah, I call it a new living retreat because we are literally living in a new way there for most people. Um, And, you know, you really can carry that with you into your regular life and inspire it at another level. Um, Everybody's capable of that. They just need an experience of it to know they're capable of it, right? Yeah. So that's what I try to provide, and it's it's a lot of fun, too. We definitely have a lot of fun, and we do a lot of playing together. <laughs> I have a memory of one fun girl who was playing in a waterfall one day, and we were eating mangoes, and she had mango peels all over her skin, and um, like all over her face, like a spa <laughs> kind of thing, and she was just laughing, and she said, I just feel like a kid. She said, all day today, I just feel like a kid. Yeah, that's a and, gift. Uh, and that was great. It was really rejuvenating for her. So we have some fear busting activities too. Yeah. Uh, you know, like jumping off a cliff. Of course, it's optional, but those who do it feel super empowered. <laughs> jumping off a cliff into water or onto yes, solid into ground? Water. It's, it's safe, <laughs> but you know, it's a little scary if it's something you haven't done before. And so it's conquering that. You know, just knowing that you can change your story and you can do things that you didn't really think could be part of your experience and once you do something like that you feel like you can do another thing that might have felt too hard before yeah you just, you just recognize that you are in charge of creating the experience you want and um just gotta step into that step up into the challenge and so we help you do that and go home with a new confidence to do that on your own one of the reasons that ellen and i have become friends is uh, we met at the woodstock fruit festival uh several years ago Ellen and I talk about emotions. We don't just talk about raw food. We don't just talk about physical well-being, yoga, running, health, whatever. We get in there and we talk about emotional well-being. And uh, we've really connected around that topic. So I love Ellen because she doesn't just look at the, the food aspect of things or the yoga aspect of things, which she knows a lot about. So earlier in our conversation, you talked about your word for the year. 2015. So tell me about that process of choosing a word for the year. Yeah, it's something I've been doing for over 10 years now, or since I I got a divorce back then. And I I was really trying to remake myself and step into, um, you know, a a more inspired life on purpose, more intentional. And so one of the things I did with my kids I've done every year was this little New Year's ritual. It involves, um, you know, highlighting what happened the last year and also letting go of some things and setting some intentions for the new year. And the final thing we do, and we drink a toast to it for each of us in the family, is to choose a word that we would love to embody for the next year, to live into. And uh, so I chose faith for this year. Um, In past years, I've chosen peace or love or um, all manner of things. But um, you kind of know if you really listen for it, you'll, you'll know what comes to the surface and you just trust that. And um, so I've written it on a rock for myself as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes to keep it in your space with you very close, holding it in your heart so that you can really um, embody that, that quality. Right? It really does make a difference, and it, it can really inform every decision you make that year if you're coming from that <clears throat> space, you know. Did you engrave your smoothie glass with faith? So that's you can a great see idea. that for the rest of the year. <laughs> those, Tim. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. Smoothie glasses with words. Intentions, in intentional smoothies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice faith. I gotta figure I, out I what my word of, is. Lots of lots of tricks like that for just um, keeping intention in your awareness. Uh, when I do my yoga classes, we pause often, like every five minutes. We stop and close our eyes and remember where we're going. And just remember what our intention was because it's so easy to forget. You know, we yeah. like New Year's resolutions, you forget them the day after. So the trick is to really mean it, <laughs> to, yeah. to make a practice of reminding yourself of your intention for where you need to be going, where you need to be heading, keeping your compass setting, um, present moment, awareness, right? Um, so yeah. we learn some of these kind of things on the retreat in our life coaching. You just gave me a great thought. Sorry, my brain plays with words. You just said we need to be present to um, where we're going to be heading. And if you get rid of that space, if you get rid of the pause, beheading becomes a beheading. 
And that's what we end up doing in life. We don't take that pause. We, pause. we don't take the time, and we end up like decapitating ourselves. Right. We end up being self-sabotage. <laughs> total self-sabotage, and we're totally detached from ourselves. We are literally beheaded. You know, we're going along in life, and we're not we're not present to our body. We're not present to our life. We're not really present to anything. We just have our head floating around, creating up all these stories. Well, about, the really cool thing that people don't realize is it's pretty <clears throat> simple to stop doing that. Yeah, it create the space, takes, the pause. It just creates a pause where you just remind yourself. Yeah. And you get back in the driver's seat. Yeah, and you just have to do it. I mean, if you have to do it a thousand times a day, do it a thousand times a day. It's okay not to judge how often we have to remind ourselves, but just to keep doing it. I have a friend who sets yeah. his watch for every hour. Every hour it dings, and he does a little practice to remind himself of, you know, just to get centered again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his intention for the day. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a problem that a lot of people bump into. If they continually have to do that and remind themselves and continually do the practice, they often see themselves as a failure. Like, if I was really good, if I was succeeding at this, then I wouldn't need to do it a thousand times a day, or I wouldn't need to do it at all. Mm -hmm. But anybody that has achieved mastery in anything will tell you that it's a constant daily practice. You never escape that. You I just, say inspired living is a daily practice. It is. It really is. And the moment that you're not present to it, the moment that you're not engaged in the practice is the moment that it starts falling apart again. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's really no big deal to remind yourself if you need to, you know, you can do whatever tactics work for you. But yeah. um, <clears throat> it's a good feeling and you and you do get better at it, at holding um, a torch for something. Yeah. And it can become <laughs> gentle and fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it is fun. It's definitely fun. I mean, I'm, I'm, enjoy I'm already enjoying it. It's only January 4th and I've already had a lot of fun with my word. I've been finding it everywhere. I see it on signs. I see it in bookstores. I, I grab it whenever I can. I just I cut it out of magazines. I put it around me so, so that I really am with it. Yeah, it's a cool practice. So Nice. Yeah, you've got to have faith that you're not going to forget it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and I have faith that y'all are going to want to come on a retreat, so let me know. Oh, so how do people uh, find out about the retreat or find out about you and your coaching and what you do? Yeah. Well, I'm Ellen Livingston. My website is the same, ellenlivingston.com. I'll put the link up in the, in the video. So, yeah, the email is ellen at ellenlivingston.com. So I'd make it easy to find me. And there's a retreat page on the website. You can um, just fill out a contact me form and ask any questions. I'll probably call you so that we can chat about it um, person to person and find out what, what you need and what your questions are. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So check Ellen out. Again, one of my favorite people. Uh, we are aligned in so many different ways on how we approach helping people. So, uh, good, good person. Thanks, Tim. Ellen, thank you. All right. I'm off to go run up a mountain now. I'll see you in a bit.